Uh, we're going to have a look at various things through today. We'll have a look at today's heavy uh, showers, which could turn a bit thundery later across some parts of the country. First, sort of convective afternoon, perhaps, of the uh, spring and summer season. I'm sure there'll be uh, many more to come as well. Uh, beyond that, we're going to look at uh, the weather into next week. It's going to be uh, turning very mild over the weekend. Quite warm, actually, on Sunday in the east taste of summer. It's staying pretty mild uh, into next week as well. But uh, quite a bit of uncertainty then uh, going through the latter stages next week and towards the end of the month. And I'll explain everything that's going on uh, in a moment. Now, for it going for you, to the advertise, there'll usually be video ads on my weather pages at gasweatherbiz.com. Uh, please pay us as you'd be supporting uh, gasweatherbiz.com um, by doing that. So this is the radar picture currently across uh, the British Isles. We've got some uh, general uh, light rain there across southwestern parts of Scotland. Some heavier pulses going to uh, north east. And we've got these heavy showery bursts of rain across England and Wales, particularly in the east and the south east. Now these could turn a bit uh, thundery, as I said at the start of the video, across some parts of south east. Have a look at the convective potential today. Uh, we do see that we've got some Cape Bear going on across uh, southeastern parts of uh, England just at the moment. So run through the afternoon, actually that area of the convective potential does get uh, a little bit uh, more widespread. So many central uh, southern eastern parts of the country could well get some heavy uh, thundery showers after. I think there will be some torrential downpours around in places. And we may well hear some thunder, see some flashes of lightning and get some hail as well. Now we've got, not got huge convective potential here. We're not in the uh, yellow and red colours that you can get uh, with this in the summer when it gets very hot and uh, humid. So uh, the uh, showers are more sort of more sort of towards thundery showers as opposed to huge uh, thunderstorm cells. Uh, but nevertheless, they will be uh, noteworthy. There will be some heavy downpours around. There will be some flashes of lightning, I think, this afternoon. So if you're a convective fan, uh, definitely uh, things are now starting to get interesting for you. Now, as we move through into the weekend, we're still looking at this deep area of low pressure to develop in the Atlantic and start to spread in these uh, southwesterly and southerly winds. Uh, much warmer air coming up with that area of low pressure. So the temperatures will be lifting up uh, over the weekend, but we will have the fly in the ointment on Saturday with an area of rain moving across the country in the form of a warm front. So have a look at the precipitation Saturday. For Saturday, we do see that really heavy rain in the Atlantic uh, coming in towards Ireland. That's associated with that very deep area of low pressure. But ahead of that, uh, there's a warm front moving across the country. That'll be taking cloud and rain across many parts of uh, the country. Perhaps not Scotland and North East England. They could stay mainly dry through uh, daylight hours on Saturday. But uh, much of England, Wales and Ireland will turn uh, damp on Saturday. Perhaps not particularly heavy rain, but uh, persistent rain and enough uh, to spoil things. But as we move into Sunday, that's really when we get those high temperatures uh, coming along. That warm front will push through as we go through Saturday in towards uh, Saturday evening, overnight, Saturday night. And by Sunday, uh, what we'll be left with is a trailing weather system here across central parts of the country. That's on a very weak uh, cold front. But to the east and south of that, that's where the high temperatures uh, will be. In fairly reasonable sunny spells, I think it will brighten up after cloudy start on Sunday in the east and the southeast. Most temperatures really will respond uh, to that sunshine, getting up to around 18, 19, possibly 20 or 21 degrees on Saturday, uh, on a Sunday rather. Certainly a taste of early summer, uh, much, much warmer than we've had for many, many weeks, many months actually. Have to go back uh, to September uh, to find temperatures as high as that across parts of the country. But uh, not so for the north. In the uh, north and the northwest, we're actually still in cooler temperatures uh, there, so we never really get that warmth pushing up. Uh, but for the southeast, definitely uh, a taste of early summer, and uh, I think it'll be very pleasant indeed. Now, looking out beyond this, we're looking at a uh, fairly warm week next week, or a mild week, temperatures above average. These are the GFS temperature ensembles. There's the spike in the temperatures that we've got coming up over the weekend, going well above average. The red line here is the average for the time period. We're going well above that red line over the weekend. Then that weakish cold front will come through and just drop the temperatures back a bit, but we're still above average. And that's really how we maintain the weather then going out uh, through next week. So 17th, 18th, 19th, uh, we're well above uh, red 
shape line were above average. And there's not a lot of precipitation. There are some precipitation spikes down here on the bottom of the chart, but not a lot really uh, going on. I think there'll be a lot of dry weather, particularly in the south and the southeast, uh, through the course of next week. And temperatures will be very pleasant. From around the 20th, though, we start to get this split in the ensembles. And this is where things are starting to get more complicated then as we're going into the final uh, sort of week to 10 days of the month. We've got some very warm members of the ensemble, and we've got some very cool uh, members of the ensemble, actually quite cold members there uh, coming along as we go out towards the end of the month with some of the members going down below minus uh, 5 Celsius at 850 HPA. That's proper cold air uh, coming back once again. But there's a huge scatter there in that ensemble. It's very difficult to say uh, what's happening, I think, as we go through uh, the final week or so of the month. What we can say is the next week, uh, Friday the 12th to Friday the 19th of April, it's going to be uh, fairly mild, temperatures above average, and just look how mild it is across the continent. Now, now you'll remember, I've been showing these quite a lot recently, and much of the continent has been uh, locked in blue colours, dark uh, blue colours, indicating temperatures well below average, in some cases 8 to 10 degrees below average uh, across northern and eastern parts of uh, the continent. But it just goes to show how quickly things can switch around because now virtually the whole of the continent is bathed in the red colours and that's temperatures going above average and that switch has happened in probably less than a week really uh, for many places so it just goes to show how quickly uh, the weather changes particularly at this time of year where we're moving from winter in towards uh, spring and summer but uh, it happens reversely as we go from summer into autumn winter but it just goes to show you how quickly things can change and you think that the weather is locked in and it's they're going to warm up and then within a few days virtually the entire continental land mass has gone above average it is going to be a milder week coming up uh, for many places these are the generic charts this is first of all from the gfs model uh, we see that we've got uh, a southwesterly flow across the country as we go into the start of next week low pressure still running close to uh, scotland with a jet stream coming in across the british isles so it'll be unsettled in the northwest but uh, not a lot of rain in the southeast high pressure tending to dominate but we go out beyond that uh, gfs model uh, then wants to build high pressure in uh, from the south so a lot of settled weather next week across england and wales always more unsettled in the north uh, and we sort of end up in the 10 day period this is monday the 22nd of april uh, with high pressure there uh, starting to dominate over scandinavia again so possibly bringing the winds around into a cooler direction but i think we do have to be very careful about how seriously we're taking the charts from uh, the 20th of april onwards because there's a lot of scattering that gfs temperature ensemble and it's very difficult to pin it down really what's going on as we go uh, through to the ecmwf model again it's similar for uh, the start of next week we're running that low pressure into the north and west of scotland high pressure to the south so always more unsettled for scotland and northern ireland at the start of next week showers along as well as rain a lot of dry weather though uh, for england and wales what happens as we go through next week a little bit different to the GFS. Uh, the ECMWF wants to bring this weather system down across the country. That could take rain down into England and Wales later on next week. This is was this is at the time where the GFS was building high pressure up from the south. Um, and then the ECMWF wants to uh, end up at the 10 day period, Monday the 22nd, in this fairly cool and strong northwesterly wind uh, with high pressure out to the southwest, low pressure up to the north and northeast, bringing down uh, this coolish. Uh, sort of northwest wind. So this, if this was in the GFS ensembles, this would be one of the cooler members of the ensemble. Not cold, uh, but cooler. And certainly the chance there, as uh, we go beyond that, if we was to move back to trough through into Scandinavia and build bridge in the Atlantic, we could start to pull in a cold uh, sort of northerly wind. Now you remember the other day I was talking about the end of the month possibly turning cold again uh, with blocking coming back over the North Pole. We uh, used the Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast charts to back this up. Remember, the Arctic Oscillation is a reflection of weather in the uh, Arctic. It's not a driver of the uh, weather. Uh, and many of the members at the end of the month, you'll remember, were going uh, down into negative territory again, indicating negative NAO, which uh, extrapolates to blocking coming back over the pole. Well, that's less so now. Uh, we do have a, a bit of a drop off in the Arctic Oscillation, but it's more or less dropping back towards neutral, actually after going positive in the coming week. So positive Arctic Oscillation means I've got low pressure over the pole, high pressure in the mid latitudes. We strengthen the westerly winds across the Atlantic into Europe. Uh, negative Arctic Oscillation is the reverse. We get blocking over the Arctic. Uh, we weaken the westerly winds. We pull down cold air into the mid latitudes. Well, uh, as I say, there's uh, a 
there is a drop off going on as we go towards the end of the month but we're not dropping down particularly into a negative territory but if we just have a final look at the uh, NAFs you'll remember uh, I had a look at this uh, the other day I wasn't back to successfully explain what these are these are ensemble means uh, of the GFS model so each member of the uh, GFS ensemble is grouped together uh, with these charts and it comes up with an ensemble uh, an ensemble mean now there's about 20 uh, members of the GFS ensemble so uh, all each one of those 20 members is put together and this is the mean chart. This is for 10 days away uh, and it's shown a positive anomaly there across the British Isles indicating high pressure really dominating the weather and, uh, as we move out beyond that that high pressure is maintained to uh, the 23rd which is 11 days away but look what happens as we go beyond this again uh, the NAFs want to take that high pressure out towards the west of the country so that by the time we get through towards 348 hours away, a long way away, uh, but we are building that high pressure, uh, the positive heights again around Iceland and Greenland and down into the Atlantic. And as we go towards the 10 day period, this is the 28th of April, right at the end of the month, we've got a lot of blocking there being forecast by the uh, NAFs in the Atlantic, around Greenland, around Iceland, and we're developing this trough uh, around uh, Spain and Portugal, moving into central parts of Europe and into the south as well. So this is a proper negative sort of North Atlantic Oscillation, Arctic Oscillation type pattern being indicated by the GFS Ensemble means as we go towards the end of the month and that would be a much colder pattern uh, and also increasingly unsettled particularly for England and Wales it would be turning very cool and wet there uh, for the end of month, not good news at all uh, going out towards the end of April, now I have to emphasise that's an, a, a very very long way away, uh, do have to be careful about it, but the uh, ensemble means of the GFS model are pretty good really and they can be quite useful in the uh, latter stages going out towards the uh, two week mark they can be quite useful to look at uh, for picking up on trends and that's definitely a trend there uh, that's, that's within uh, the GFS ensembles uh, to turn it much much cooler and more unsettled as we go out towards the end of April so we do have to be keeping an eye on that uh, what's happening at the end of the month but in any case we're looking at uh, a much uh, warmer sort of milder spell of weather over the next few days uh, into next week as well particularly for England and Wales I'll be uh, doing all the detail on that tomorrow in the weekend forecast but that's it for now thanks for watching